Okay, guys, I thought what we'd do real quick at the beginning of this video is we would take a look at our stationary camp that we set up out here with our tarp the other day on our raised bed platform. Like I told you in yesterday's video, it rained for 12 hours solid yesterday. It rained again last night. You can see everything under this tarp is dry. Our bed is dry. There's no water standing anywhere on our tarp. And that's a really good thing because that's what we want to avoid at all costs is water standing on top of this tarp. So we've got it set up so that that water runs off the tarp. Everything underneath is good and dry. So that's a good solid camp setup. Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is continue in our basic survival knowledge series with a three-tiered water filter. We talked a little bit about filters yesterday in our video on collecting and utilizing ground source water. We talked about filters somewhat, but I wanted to explain the three-tiered filter to you today. What you can do with it, what you can do with it, what you can expect from it, what you can't expect from it. So we're going to go ahead and get this built on a tripod I've got behind me. I've got a water source very close, and that's important that you keep these things close together. We would need to build a fire to remove charcoal from, if that was possible, so that we could somewhat filter out some of the chemical contaminants, if that's what we were worried about. Not only are we worried sometimes about waterborne pathogens, but other times we're worried about chemical contamination of the water. And a three-tiered water filter set up correctly like this will help you to remove those things from the water. Is it going to take care of it 100%? Absolutely not. But in this case, something is better than nothing. So let's talk about this three-tiered filter. We'll get after it right now. Okay, so let's talk about this filter one layer at a time. It's going to take three bandanas or three pieces of material for this filter. The first media that we're going to use on our filter is going to be plant material of some sort. That could be sphagnum moss or whatever you have around that's a good plant type filter median that has a lot of surface area. I'm using bracken fern and basically bracken fern is abundant out here so it works really well and I've just taken a wad of bracken fern and twisted it up into kind of a circular fashion, stuck it down inside my pocket and pushed it down in the middle. Now if I had a stone, which I don't have a whole lot of out here, I could put that stone in the middle and that would help force that water down through the middle. And that's an important thing is that you never want to put so much water in here that you're running over the sides of your filter media. You always want it going straight through your filter media. Now what I've done here, and you can adjust these tripods any way you need them once you get your stuff tied to it to get the configuration that you want of your pockets. Okay guys, just a real quick tip or trick here. When you're tying bandanas up to make a filter or any kind of material, you have the ability, the heavier you make the media that's inside this, for this bandana to pull out and slip. So what you can do is just tie a knot in the corner of that bandana, or in the lap, in, in which case if you pulled up that four side, you can still tie a knot in it just like this. Then take your piece of cordage and go about halfway and put a loop in it and tie basically a slip knot in it just like this so that when you pull on one tag end it slips down then you can take that slip knot you can slip that over the knot you've made here and when you tighten that down you basically have one knot tightening against another knot and there's no way that thing can pull out then you can just take and wrap that thing underneath the other knot just like that and then on the back side, you can tie a clove hitch, you can tie a square knot, you can tie a granny knot, whatever you want to tie to secure it on there, just tie something in there that you can get out. But that will hold it securely for you, no matter how heavy the medium weight is that you put inside this filter. One thing that's important is, you're going to be filtering water through this anyway, so the water that you're going to be getting is going to be from the source. There's nothing wrong with taking this bandana down to the source and soaking it in the source water before you put it on this tripod. What that will do for you is it will saturate this material and make the water run through the material better once it goes through the media. So you're already going to be putting it through the media before it goes through this bandana again anyway. So it doesn't matter that this bandana has been wetted in the water. That's the source water. We're not trying to really take out Cryptosporidium and Giardia here. Eventually what we want to do is try to remove some chemical toxins and turbidity from the water. So then I will prime this thing a little bit one tier at a time. Once I get this set up, I want to prime it a little bit through this one tier and make sure that that water is running straight down the middle. So that's what we're going to do now. Now obviously if my water source is limited, 
I don't have the luxury of messing around and pouring water through each individual tier. But I want to pour it straight into the middle. Yes, I'm contaminating my container, but I'm planning on boiling in this container anyway at this point. If I weren't planning on boiling in this container, then I'm taking my chances anyway. And what I'm looking for now is I'm looking to see that everything's running through the middle of the filter, and you can see that it is. I have a steady stream coming straight out of the middle of that tier as I pour. Okay, the next layer of our filter needs to be charcoal. And that can be collected out of our fire. You can just get the bits out of it, any sticks or leaves you've got in there from collecting out of your fire bed or whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not a perfect process by any means. You're not going to take care of everything. This is better than nothing. Now this tier of the filter is the second tier of our filter. And it's going to have charcoal in it. If we're trying to get rid of chemical toxins in our water, Okay, I'm looking to see where my water's flowing. And I want to push all of that charcoal right to that spot as best I can. So I get the best filtration through that charcoal I get. It's another reason for running a test through this filter a little bit. I'm getting a good, nice, steady stream at the bottom here that's coming out perfect. Okay, your third and last media should be the finest media you can find. I happen to have some sand out here in this area, so I'm using sand as my final media. So I've got heavy vegetation, followed by charcoal, which really is the agent that I'm hoping is going to filter the chemicals out of the water, and then sand, which will help filter any fine or heavy particulates out of the water. Now what I have to do is I have to flush this filter, because the first water that goes through the sand is obviously going to be cloudy or dirty. So I've got to prime this filter a few times if I can afford the water. If I can't afford the water, then I'm going to run it through the filter and I'm going to let the water sit so that the sediment settles to the bottom and I'm going to drink the water that's on the top. That's if I'm not going to boil. If I'm going to boil, I can then refilter the water that's coming through this filter through some type of bandana or something to get more particulates out of the water before I boil it. So it all depends on the sequence that you're doing things in and what you're trying to do with your filter system. If I were just looking to get chemicals out of my water, I would use a filter system like this. If I were trying to make sure that there were no things in my water like cryptosporidium or giardia, I would boil my water. If I wasn't worried about chemicals, I probably wouldn't worry about the filter. If I was only worried about chemicals, I may not worry about the boil. But to be safe, I need to filter and boil. That will take care of 100% of the issues if you've got the right filter system set up. This filter system is not going to take care of everything. This is a makeshift survival type filter. It's not a professional charcoal or ceramic water filter. But it's going to be better than nothing. Okay, for the sake of demonstration purposes, I feel like I've got this filter flushed pretty good or primed. I'm just going to take my canteen cup or my water bottle cup and put it underneath this filter as a catchment. The better idea would be, if I'm following the Pathfinder system, to put a waterproof bag under there. I can then dump that bag into something here to boil, dump, and then drink. So I'm not contaminating everything. Now when I'm doing this, you can see that I'm kind of pouring this over the top in a circular fashion, and I'm pouring slowly. I don't ever want to overrun my medium, otherwise it's not going to get filtered. It's going to go through the side of the bandana somewhere. That's kind of the purpose of making sure it's all coming from one steady stream. And I'm pouring around this medium up at the top just to make sure I get that initial filtration of particulates through this plant matter before it goes into the charcoal. What I really wanted you guys to see was what that water looks like coming through that filter as opposed to what it looked like in that water. To begin with how clear it is now compared to what it was now, I kind of want you all to see real quick what this ground source that we're collecting from here looks like this is nothing like what we used yesterday this is a sand or a clay bottom and it's some pretty still water a lot of particulates in it it's pretty nasty again collecting in the container I'm gonna drink out of unless I'm gonna boil that's a big problem. Let 
Okay. I'll pour this water out of this glass so you can kind of see it. I mean, that's some pretty clear water compared to how dirty that stuff is in the stream. It does a good job at least of filtering the large particulates, things like that out. Hopefully you're getting some chemical contaminants out with the charcoal if there is any. There again, you still are better off boiling this water if you possibly can. Okay guys, well I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here for this video on how to make a simple three-tiered survival water filter. Bear in mind that all of these types of things take, number one, time and energy. Number two, you're expending hydration in hotter weather to build something like this that you're only going to try to replenish with the water that you're filtering. And the next thing you need to remember is the materials that it takes to build something like this. You're going to have to cut material for your tripod. You're going to have to expend cordage. You're going to have to expend cotton materials and bandanas and things like that, at least temporarily, while you're using this uh, setup to begin with. So the moral of the story is, just like with every other primitive or makeshift type skill, carry the things that you need in your pack to make sure you can avoid this situation. Carry some type of a ceramic water filter, like an Aquamira 50 gallon or a Life Straw. Carry some type of chlorine dioxide or 2% tincture of iodine and always, always make sure that you have a metal container and that you have the ability to create sure fire. Then you have less worries and less things to think about in a situation that may be stressful already. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, and for my family. Stay safe, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.